Welcome to HD Nation, I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, if it's in HD, we like it. Should we, should we just finish up with it? Should we start ranting about what we've been watching or should we fire up the last of the CES news? I'm good with either one, because I've been busy on both fronts. Oh, I lost a quarter. I guess we start with the CES news. <laughs> Not a lot of OLED. No. Uh, there were two things on display, though. One, Sony was showing off probably what would be a 2011 product, 3D OLED, TV, OLED TVs, that's organic light emitting diode, not LED, it's OLED, and those ultra-thin emissive displays, they were showing, I, I forget the sizes off the top of my head, I want to say it was about a 20-inch panel, 20... 23 inch panel. That's ginormous for OLED. <laughs> but they were, yes, very much so. Compared to the 11 inch model you can currently buy from Sony. Or the three inch model. These were being demonstrated afford. with 3D technology running PlayStation games and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that looked pretty neat. But over at the LG booth, they had a 15 inch model. I want to say it's the EL. EL or LE? Oh, the EL 9500. One? Yes. Water <laughs> resistant 15 inch display. And it is, of course, it has no pricing or availability. They're claiming probably a fall launch for this product, okay. so we will finally have a successor to Sony's Just OLED in time for TV. people in Arizona and Southern California with pools to the, purchase The big one. advantage for OLED really is the performance of the pixels. It right. has like the speed of a plasma, yet the thinness of an LCD, or actually thinner, and it's very, very bright. And the black is very, very dark, so you have super contrast. Well, also in theory, if they get it to scale up, it should also be cheaper than an LED to produce. I, I, in theory. In theory. That theory has not held up whatsoever so far, though. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> hey, did we mention Vizio beyond my horrible misinformation that Vizio is doing a $3,500, 75-inch 3D-ready HDTV this well, summer? Well, I think I said it was 73 inches, so I wasn't, I wasn't much better. It's 72, 72. inches, yes. <laughs> six feet! Yeah! <laughs> Awesome. A nice even six feet. LED backlit with wireless, including 802.11N, Bluetooth, 3500 bucks, and they're saying they're going to have this out in August. And that is going to be a huge, that, that's just a terrific price point. Yeah. And a giant size screen. One of the biggest you'll be able to buy this year. Hey, like we said, that's, that's like the final nail in the coffin of rear projector DLPs. You were thinking, too, not that long ago, the 70-inch big screen right. LCDs were $20,000. This year, I think they're still $20,000 from the other manufacturers. So seeing 72 inches at that price point, mm -hmm. that's just... That's going to get a lot of people excited. In theory, it could look absolutely awful. They could have the cheapest glass in the world, but I'm doubting it because right now, Vizio, number one seller of HCTVs in North America, and they're claiming they can get the best glass out there. So this is going to be, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about yeah, it. Yeah, with LED backlighting, oh always good. The <laughs> other display they had in the suite at the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas, it wasn't on the show floor itself, but what a suite it was. They had a 58-inch Razer LED 21 by 9 cinema display. Wow. Wide, widescreen. Now, now, the good folks at Philips had introduced a display similar to this in Europe last year. <laughs> uh, apparently, they might be bringing that to America. Who knows? Anyway, Vizio's going to have it. Is this all so you can run your applications on one side of the screen and have the football game on the other? Or something? I really hope so. Yes, definitely <laughs> that. It will have all of their Vizio internet applications via right. uh, available on the set as well. But the big thing is the aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. 21 by 9 comes very close to what you see in the movie theater. Uh, uh, basically about a 235 yeah. to 240 to 1 aspect ratio. Which means the shape no, of the picture. no letterboxing top and bottom. No, and they demonstrated <laughs> this with a couple of animated titles. Mm -hmm. Basically, it would detect the black bars and then scale it to fit perfectly. So if you hate black bars, think about a 21 by 9 display, and that'll be coming up later this year as well. I think that one's going to be expensive even for Vizio. Nah. <laughs> 58, you know, think about that, 58 inch though. With that aspect ratio, keep that in mind. It's it's not as rectangular or squarish right. as a 16 by 9 display. It's much wider. So They're also, I should say, doing something a lot of other vendors are doing, which is basically killing off everything but LED backlighting. Yeah. Is that for Energy Star compliance? No, it's more for the ROSE, R-O-H-S compliance. Mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, they are very anti-LED. And with all of your fluorescent lighting systems, you use a little bit of lead, or lead, excuse me, mercury. And <laughs> <laughs> ah, forgive the head cold I have. But uh, getting rid of the mercury and getting rid of mercury-based lamps out of Got any it. projection system or display system for that matter. So moving to LED gets rid of that. 
Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, and in my opinion, it's a better quality light, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. You can achieve using LEDs compared to fluorescent tubes, so you get better color quality out of these sets as well. These are both good things. Yeah. And they've got a wireless HDMI adapter. Yes! All of the XVT panels that Vizio is going to be selling this year, the 2010 models, mm -hmm. have incorporated wireless HD streaming using the 60 gigahertz technology, I believe it's Psybeams. They now have a four-port HDMI transmitter Basically, you can plug four devices into it, transmits wirely, wirelessly to the supporting Vizio oh, TVs be. or any TV that supports the Psybeam technology, but it doesn't come with the receiver, considering the receivers are built into the Vizio TVs. Anyway, 250 bucks, and that is by far the cheapest I've seen for an announced product in the wireless space. How, how, any idea what kind of range we're talking about here? Uh, 30 feet solid, even through wow. a wall, I would say. And you could probably, I would say you could probably double that under ideal circumstances, like line of sight in a big room or something like that. So an IR blaster underneath the television, my wireless HDMI, and I can stuff everything else in the closet. Yeah, you won't even need the IR blaster for the, wow. for the Vizio TVs, because they all have Bluetooth. And they also oh. showed off some great headphones, Bluetooth enabling one, wireless controllers using that technology, right. but also your standard Bluetooth headphones. So if you want to watch the TV in a room and turn the volume down, yet still enjoy it and not disturb anyone, boom. I'll sold. reserve my judgment until they hear them, because I, oh. I, Bluetooth audio usually sounds very compressed and very awful. But i got to say, in my current living environment, where the kids next to the HDTV, it would be awesome to be able to do you know, a, a, a really simple, convenient, and wireless headphones off of the HGTV. That, that would be awesome. That would be convenient. That would be nice. Optoma, the projector people, have a new line of 3D-ready projectors designed for gaming from the ground up. Designed for gaming, I love that. The game time models are shipping first quarter, and they're cheap. 500 bucks for the GT360, 700 bucks for the GT720. Short throw lenses for small rooms, 2,500 lumens, which is pretty solid. The GT360 is basically designed for the Wii. It's 800 by 600. And the GT720 is 1280 by 800. So they're basically talking 720p-ish resolutions. And they both include, and I think this is the gaming part, not long, they include a remote, which is kind of obvious, but they include a backpack. <laughs> for transportation. For transportation. Actually, the last Optima projector I picked up came with its own travel case. Mm -hmm. So I think a backpack would just make it a little more I don't know, useful. I like that thought. So yeah. we should also point out that Optoma announced another 3D ready projector, 720p, the AC home theater projector. It's going to cost $700. It's the HD66. So 1080p still costs $1,000, at but least the quality Optoma. gets better. I need a new projector. I also I have to mention, too, LG showed off a 3D projector as well. Six chip, basically two light paths using two separate lamps, uh, six chips to do each color processing. Is that for 3D without the glasses? No, no. Oh, 3D okay. with the glasses. But, and then it projects all of that through the single lens system. So you end up mm -hmm. with both images being projected through that one lens system. That got a lot of oohs and ahs I saw from the crowd for the, for the non-TV right. 3D systems. Get your movie and your yeah. sports on. On the more high end, Denon introduced the S-B5D, or it be the S-5BD. It's an integrated profile 2.0 Blu-ray player and 5.1 channel receiver, $1,800, and Macintosh. Those are the people with the 60s style faces on all their incredibly expensive high-end gear. Sounds gorgeous, not cheap though. They introduced their very first Blu-ray player. Aww. Aww. I know there's a lot of audio, audio <laughs> files out there who really enjoy their products. Check the lower third for the price on that one because I just, I just <laughs> didn't want to say it. Ooh.